All right, so I got a little sick of looking at that view as a logly. So I went ahead and just took some time and developed a prettier view of this. So we're just going to go ahead and create it. And there's a lot of things we can do with aesthetics, but I'm trying to find a balance between working on uh, making things look nice and making things functional. So there are more things we can do. I'm just going to do this one thing, and we'll do log and view in a different video as well. Uh, just so we don't waste too much time working on aesthetics. I know that's what some people care about, and there's a lot of videos out there, including my own. Um, if you want those, I can I can post some links, or you can check out my playlist. But I really want to make sure we get to the more nitty gritty back end stuff. So let's go ahead and start by just putting a Z stack. We're going to bet all this in a Z stack. I just always choose one of the random ones like that. Put it in a Z stack, okay. And what I included for you uh, is some images. Um, I included this blur, this image right here. It's the faded carousel, uh, but blurred. And all these, you can find a link to all these images actually in, uh, in the description. And we should be creating 1x, 2x, and 3x versions of everything, but to be honest, it's not really that crucial right now for what we're working on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put an image here, and that image is going to be, uh, it's going to be upstream. We want that blurred image, okay? And what I want is I want it to be resizable. I want it to be scaled uh, to fill. And I want its width. I want the width, the width of the frame to be equal to UI screen dot main dot bounds dot width. Kind of a long-winded way to get the official width of the screen. Uh, and the edges uh, need to ignore all. Okay. And on top of that, I want to put a series of gradients and a color. Just to, I, I kind of fiddled around until I found something I liked. So I'm going to go ahead and put them right now. So I'm going to grab some gradients. I'm going to put two gradients and I'm going to put one one just color on top, okay? And I'm put color dot white uh, with an opacity of 0 0.1. Each of these gradients I'm going to give it an opacity of 0 0.2. All right. And these gradients I will actually do. I'm going to do a left to right or leading to trailing. I'm going to do a blue to white. Um, top to bottom, I'm going to do a black to white. Top, bottom. Let's go ahead and just resume and see what we have so far. It's already going to look light years better, uh, which is not really hard to do considering what it looked like to start with. There you go, it's already looking a lot better. Next thing I want to do is I want to do edges, ignoring, and we want to do all. Okay, and for this V stack, I want to make sure the spacing is zero. And I'm going to get rid of sign up. Okay, you already know you're on the sign up page. So, what I'll do is I'll put all of these text fields here, I'm going to put them all inside of. Let's say inside of an H stack or V stack, I mean, sorry. Okay. And then I'm going to, the reason I'm doing that is because there's a limit on how many items can be in a V stack. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put an image inside or on, on top of all these fields. And this is an image I did not include for you. Um, it is logo because I'm actually going to be uploading this app to the App Store as a functioning app by the end of this tutorial. So I'm going to have, I think it should just, mine is just going to be um, right here, assets. I'm going to use this. But what I would do for you is you can come here for sign up and I would just pick a random image. I would do a system image, system name, and do time lapse or something like that. Something that's not too ugly. Okay, and that, that'll be kind of your image up top. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to do a recipe. I'm just going to go so I want you to, you know, I want you to realize that we're going the whole way on all the, and everything, you know, we're not, we're not kind of, we're not holding back on anything uh, because I, I am going to be actually up, uploading. This is going to be a functional application. Mm -hmm. So uh, we want to do scale to fill. We want to do resizable. I'm going to do a shadow. I'm going to give it. I don't need to worry about the color, but I do want it to affect the radius. I want to give it a radius of five. 
and I want to offset it in the y dimension by five as well. And I like that. And then between those items, I'm going to put a spacer. I'm going to give it a frame height of 50. That's pretty reasonable. I'm going to go to this V stack, this entire V stack. And I'm going to give that a padding 30. It's already looking pretty good. Next thing I want to do is I want to take this V stack here. I want to make sure that there's no spacing here as well. And I want to put some rectangles in here. And the reason I'm putting the rectangles is I thought they'd look nice if I were to do following rectangle.frame. We really just want to modify the width, the height. I'll give it a height of two. Maybe even, maybe even just one, I think. Let's do one for now. Actually, we'll do two. And we'll give it a foreground color of white. And we'll give it an opacity of 0 0.2. That, I kind of like that, all right. Um, and then I want to give each of these fields, I want to give them a frame height of 30. I think that will look much nicer. So I'm going to copy all that and I'm going to paste it. All of them. It's starting to look a lot nicer. But truthfully, I might even go as far as uh, giving these a height of 40. Okay, and the last thing I need to do now is put a sign up, put a button now. Okay, this button, it'll say sign up. And maybe we'll even put an image. But the minute I put two things, I need to put an H stack. And let's go to SF symbols. Let's just choose like a check mark or something like that. I like these check marks. So system name. SF symbols are fantastic. I cannot preach them enough. I like that a lot. And just a spacer with a yeah frame. Uh, 10. Maybe just 30 or something. So you can give it some room. Okay, and that's pretty much what it's going to be. So, maybe the last thing I'll do here is I'm going to put a spacer at the bottom of this entire piece. I'm going to close that up. This needs to be above that. So, spacer. or something like that, just to kind of kick it up a little bit. That's, that's a lot nicer. All right. So that's pretty good. We don't have an action for this button yet, but that's OK. I'll just give something default for a second and say print here. OK, that's enough for that. Now let's make our way over to Google Firebase. So first thing you need to do is you need to go to Firebase, you need to create a pro or an, an account. So I'm just going to open an incognito browser so you can see what that would look like. Somebody logs into my main one. So Firebase, you need to go to Get Started. Uh, you're going to need to log in, obviously. And when you're all nice and logged in, or even maybe even in the process, it'll ask you to create a project. So I'm going to create a new project here. Now I'm going to name this project Recipe. Okay. And when I click Continue, I'm just going to enable analytics because, to be honest, why not? Um, I'm just going to do my default account. All right, that's perfect. It's going to create my project. It's doing all its own stuff right here. And once that, uh, once this portion is finished, if we look back at our to-do list, we're going to be setting up the Firebase and Firestore. We're going to initialize a Firestore. And then we're going to start installing the pods and setting up, you know, let's just even say, Setup functional sign up screen. Okay, continue. All right.
So once we get here, we can click on iOS. It actually has a really nice way to get us through how to create uh, an app here, or how to, uh, how to um, associate our app. So let's go, let's go back here to Xcode. And make sure we know what our bundle ID is. So if you click on this up here, you'll get your bundle ID. Here's your bundle ID, your identifier. You can copy it because we're going to go over here and we need to toss that in. That's how it knows to allow us to access in here. I'm going to nickname it Recipe. Okay, and I'm just going to register the app. Okay, now you need to download this Google service info uh, P list. Okay, I'm going to go to show and finder. The reason I'm going to go to show and finder is because this is not the first one I have, so I'm going to delete my old one so I can rename this one. I don't want I want it. Let's do this. Move to trash. And we want to get rid of that. Okay. And what I need to do now is I'm going to need to drag it into here. Okay. So let's just make that look easy. Let's bring them out to the same desktop or window, or whatever. You can drag that in here. I'm just going to put it right next to the other P list. Okay. Make sure you have copy items, create groups, and recipe. All right. Or your target is what that was. But I have mine's a recipe, but you need to make sure you have the proper target. All right, we can click next. So we, now we need to initialize a pod file. So if you don't know how to already uh, add Cocoa Pods, then you can watch my tutorial for that. Um, it's on my channel under the basics playlist. Um, and yeah, so assuming you already know how to do that, what we're going to do is I'm going to go over here and I have a terminal open, I have a browser open. I'm going to go find uh, my code. So I'm going to go recipe, I'm going to go with the code. And I'm going to find this file right here, this Xcode project. I, what I like to do is I like to come over to the terminal, I write CD space, and I drag that in. And that, show, that actually gets me my destination automatically. I just kind of backspace the file itself. And now I hit enter and I'm in the proper folder, see? And then I can go over here, I can grab pot init, I copied it, I'm pasting it. And now it is initializing, so it created a pod file for me. So now that I have a pod file ready to go, I'm going to go over to the text editor, okay? And so in this text editor, I'm going to drag that pod file that was just created. Hmm. We need to drag it up here so that it opens. Hmm. Hmm. Open with text edit. There we go. I'm going to close my other pod file for different projects so I don't get confused. And here we are. So what I'm going to do is I need to add the pods. So I'm going to add them right here under where it says pods for and then the name of your application. So in here, I'm going to go back over to where it wants me. It's going to tell me which ones I need to add. So these commented out lines are, it means that they're, you know, they're not going to be actually executed. They're for us, but I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and comment everything they want me to comment over, copy all that over. I'm going to drag that and I put it right there. Okay, I put it under pods for recipe. I'm going to say, let's get used to putting the double slash. So start list of pods. This is for me, okay? And then I'm going to say end list of pods. Okay? And I want to add a few more pods. The ones I want to add are the following. And I'm going to, I'm going to suggest you do the same because I'm going to use them, okay? pod firebase dot slash firestore and pod sp alert we're going to use both of those all right so you definitely need to do the firestore one this one is optional you don't have to but we will end up using it at least if you follow this tutorial one for one and make sure you get rid of these right there okay you don't want that you just want you want it to say pod no arrows and that's that so what i can do is i can save that make sure you save it all right now that it's saved you're going to go back over to terminal and you're going to say pod install make sure you're still in the proper folder okay pod install and it looks like it's not doing anything but it's definitely doing things it's going through it's installing all these pods sometimes it's quicker sometimes it's slower it depends if you know if you've installed these pods and other projects before uh, it's just about done and from now on if we go back over to this Xcode project that we were working on let's find it now we no longer want to ever use I'm going to close out of it, okay? I'm going to close that. 
And from now on, you want to make sure you're always using the workspace. Okay, the workspace is inclusive of your pods. You will never get it to work properly using the Xcode project. Okay. So now that we've done that, I'm going to go here. I'm go back to desktop. I'm going to go to code recipe and just to save us time in the future, I'm going to drag it here. Code recipe. I'm going to go to the code. And now I'm going to open the workspace. Crucial, crucial, crucial. The workspace, okay? And um, let's go ahead and see what we got. Everything should look exactly the same for now because we haven't actually used the Google Firebase yet. So what we need to do is we'll look back at their instructions and we'll say next. And you want to add the initialization code. So the, you can you can see there's only two new lines we're adding. We need to, we can just copy them word for word. Just hit the copy button. You'll go over to App Delegate. And you'll put it up here. You can write it yourself, but you know it's foolproof if you just copy what they have. So copy, and then you're going to go over to where it says "Did finish launching with options." Got to put it before the run before the return true, or else it won't run because nothing after return ever runs. I mean, technically there are exceptions and there are ways to make it happen, but that's how it works generally. Right, next, and now you need to run the app to verify the installation. So I'm going to save it. And last time I actually had my 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 app crash last time I did this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest that you do this with a simulator and not with a canvas. Okay, so I'm going to run it. And let's see what happens. I'm going to run it with the simulator. It takes a good amount of time because there's a lot of tasks that I need to go through. You probably even hear my computer through this tutorial. When I first ran, uh, when I ran this code and it did, you know, use this Firebase configure and it tried communicating with, um, with Firebase and Firestore, um, I went through the simulator and it actually didn't work. So what ended up happening is it, this now says congratulations, but previously it still had that kind of like rotating progress, um, progress icon, and it was just waiting for some sort of communication to verify that there was a successful addition of Firebase to the app. Uh, and, it, and it wasn't working initially, so um, yeah. So essentially, I went through and I tried to restart the phone, and I did a couple of other different things. But the you know pretty much you know when I say a couple other things, pretty much just like restarting the phone and maybe uh, deleting the uh, the app from the simulator, reinstalling the app on the simulator, those those kinds of things. Uh, and eventually, it did, did end up working. And that, from my experience, I've only ever had to get this to work once and from now on it'll work like a charm. Uh, this is kind of like a one-time deal so because then I click continue the console and now we, we're good to go. We can actually continue uh, we can we can create a you know, like storage or database and we can set up this Firestore uh, database so everything should be good to go and in the next video we'll continue making a functioning sign-on or sign-up page. Alright